What's up, everybody? LBT here. Uh, just call. Uh, wanted to do a video here and uh, kind of get caught up a little bit. I know I've been real busy. Um, I got like two jobs now, which I'm not going to talk about because that's kind of like private stuff. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the news right now that's um, kind of disconcerting, mostly related to weather. Um, I mean, this is a trend that's been going on and, and really accelerating over the past 18 months or so. Actually, you know, really for the last 10 years or so, um, you know, temperatures have been stable throughout Earth. But, you know, the weather has gotten so volatile and, and, and you know, like storms like Katrina and uh, Yasi and, you know, these big super hurricanes are happening. Uh, the tornadoes that just, you know, just ripped across the United States really are unprecedented. I mean, I literally, I saw a video over the weekend um, where there was literally three twisters in one picture. It looked like something out of that movie The Day After Tomorrow or something where the three twisters were rampaging all across Los Angeles all together. And, I mean, that's the kind of extreme weather that the, the Earth is experiencing right now that just it really concerns me that um, you know, there's obviously changes that are taking place uh, you know, and you know, some of you are going to say, "Well, of course, there's changes." They've been talking about global climate change for a long time. Um, you know, global warming, blah blah blah, um, and that's true. Uh, however, the conclusions I believe are completely false and, and myths, um, and driven to you know create carbon taxes and things like that. Um, again, if you've watched my videos before, you know I totally disagree with and disapprove of the concept of man-made global warming. Uh, we are experiencing global climate change, but it's got nothing to do with us. Um, human beings produce approximately 1% of all the carbon emissions uh, you know, in the atmosphere. And carbon is a good thing. Plants need carbon. Uh, we need carbon. Uh, we're carbon-based life form. So again, uh, I'm not going to get into that, but what I am going to talk about is something, uh, you know, this is, this is just kind of a, a, an article here talking about the, um, the tornadoes that's unmatched in decades for, you know, tornado standards. And I mean, some of the, like I said, I'm sure you guys have heard all about it. You know, some of, it's just really kind of amazing how much damage some tornadoes can do. Um, which brings me to my next subject and that's the photon belt. Um, and, the photon belt is what's considered a pseudoscientific belief, according to Wikipedia here, but um, th there's a serious, and basically this is what the photon belt, uh, new age, you know, people, I don't know where the, these guys got this concept from, which by the way, I'm not a new age person, um, I just try to look at the world with uh, the most um, realistic uh, congruency that I can find with, you know, what's, what we're experiencing versus the information I'm gathering. You know, if it doesn't make sense, like carbon emission based global warming just doesn't make sense when we have, um, uh, polar ice caps in Mars that are m melting. So, and, you know, and they've also, uh, detected uh, a much more active sun, much more volatile sun over the past well, since about 2003, the sun's been more active. Um, but this photon belt concept, um, this is something that, you know, basically these, uh, you know, I, I'm, again, I'm not one of these people. I find this a very, very fascinating concept, and I'm not sure where I stand on it, and I guess I'm just more or less a wait and kind of see type guy. Uh, but basically what these uh, uh, New Age folks think is that this photon belt uh, that that we're entering into is going to bring about a time of only light. See this little solar system here, our solar system right here. Um, these are other stars in in our uh, Milky Way universe. And when we get to this photon belt band here, which is supposedly light energy coming from the supermassive black hole at the center of our universe, when we get to this point here, we will no longer experience night. Uh, that that we will be in a period of light only light there will be no sundown and sunrise which i find hard to believe i don't understand how traveling into a photon belt could alter that unless there was another star on the other side of our planet that lit up uh which may be a possibility um you know if you know and this might fall into the kind of the the possibility you know they, there is a telescope down in the south pole they are looking at something um the vatican has put a telescope down there um, which, by the way, the Vatican spends a lot of money on space observation, uh, especially observing the sun. Um, anyways, um, so this this concept of uh, the photon belt, it could be that 
um, our, our system is a binary system in that when we get inside this photon belt, our star's partner star, which is otherwise a brown dwarf, maybe it's possible that when we get into the photon belt, the energy, because uh, we're going to get into something else here. Other scientists refer to this as an interstellar energy field. Um, and they, they must be referring to the same thing because uh, there are too many similarities between the concept of the photon belt and the concept of the interstellar energy field. Uh, and I'll get into that in a second here. But um, if we imagine that we do have a binary star system and if we imagine that the scientists on the south pole that are apparently you know some people say they're watching nibiru or the destroyer or wormwood as it's referred to in the bible approach us from a southern position as it relates to earth um so that and then there are other people who believe that um nibiru is actually a planet that's actually part of a binary star system and that it comes to us along with our binary star. Um, and maybe it's possible that when we get into this photon belt, the energy from the photon belt will ignite that star and we will not have a day, uh, you know, a day and a night. Maybe we will end up with a star to the south and a star to the, you know, to the north where, you know, because right now the south pole, the south side of the earth definitely sees a lot less light. But if we put, you know, two stars and we were between the two stars somehow, uh, maybe it's possible that we won't have a, a night in a day anymore. But um, that's just, I don't know, I find this as an intriguing concept. But again, there's there's a lot of um, very unvi unverifiable information that, that these guys uh, kind of talk about that, you know, I'm not going to get into. So now, Referring to the energy field, um, the thing that I am going to get into, and the reason I'm talking about this, is this the concept of the photon belt. These guys say that it's going to take two to 3,000 years for our solar system to pass through this belt. And when we get over here, now we're talking about science. This is uh, referring to award-winning astrophysicist Alexia Demetria, and I've talked about this before in other videos. This is uh, solarstormwarning.com. You know, this is kind of a, kind of a chintzy-looking website, I know, folks, um, but... The information is still verified, um, and that's what I'm going to get to. Um, but basically, this is an astrophysicist. I guess back in 2009, some uh, Russian astrophysicists determined, based on readings from Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 that have already advanced into this interstellar cloud and readings that we're getting back from those two probes that are out in space ahead of us, um, that, that we are entering, in fact, into this interstellar energy cloud. And when asked about how long this is going to take for the Earth to travel through this cloud, um, the, Mr. Dmitriev here, this uh, Dmitria, he claimed that it would take two to three thousand years, which again is there's just too much correlation. I mean, photon belt, an, a belt of light, an interstellar energy cloud. I mean, they're kind of the same thing. And when we're talking about the same amount of time to pass through it, it seems like there were you know we're talking about the same thing here. So, anyways, um, now I'm going to go over here again. This, that was kind of a chintzy website. This is not just one website that's talking about this folks and these websites are all citing it they're all citing the source they're all citing the russian astrophysicist uh, this is referring to uh, this guy this uh, joseph guy that wrote this book about apocalypse 2012 um, and the entrance into the interstellar energy cloud um, and it, basically all of this stuff it, it i know it sounds kind of hokey pokey uh, as far as the scientific aspects of it are concerned um, but it's verified, <laughs> you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, here we go. Uh, I, I found this very interesting because this is the Huffington Post. And again, I've talked about the Huffington Post. Obviously the Huffington Post is a very, very liberal news source. And once upon a time, I posted uh, a different uh, thing in a video from the Huffington Post that talked about this uh, uh, interstellar energy cloud. And I had a liberal friend that was like, oh, come on, dude, that's on a that's on a social media network that the Huffington Post creates. That's just, you know, anybody posted that. So this is actually a Huffington Post article citing Joseph Lawrence's book about 
passing into this energy cloud. And they, again, cite in this article that on Christmas Eve 2009, the, sta- the startling hypothesis that our solar system, the sun, and all its planets were moving into a potentially dangerous and destabilizing energy cloud. And it was resoundingly sustained, this hypothesis. Uh, and this was re- sustained because of, in a research paper, a strongly, highly tilted interstellar magnetic field near the solar system published in December 24th, ni- or 2009, in Nature, a magazine, highly uh, respected in scientific journal, M. Ofer et al. reported on data transmitted from Voyager, again, the twin spacecraft that have been exploring the outer reaches of the solar system since 1977. And then they go on in this article to discuss what was discovered by Voyager. So this is real, folks. This is absolutely real. And it explains why we have and are witnessing warming on Pluto, on Europa, on Mars, on Jupiter, on Saturn. We're able to detect these things. We have the ability to detect heat off of surface temperatures uh, through radiation sensing devices. This is not hard to do. You know, people say, oh, how can you know the temperature on Mars? Dude, it's not hard. We know ultraviolet spectrums, light years across the universe, and we can estimate uh, heat intensities from a number of places. It's not hard to do it within our solar systems, folks. And so scientists have been discovering that the solar system is warming for quite some time now, well, for about the past 10 years. And so this is why man-made global warming is a farce. They're, you know, they knew that warming was going to begin taking place, and they created this man-made warming thing as a myth, a distraction, whatever you want to call it, but it's just not backed by enough science. You know, um, the fact of the matter is, is, um, yeah, you know, the fact of the matter is, is we're going to be experiencing more and more of this weather, and it's going to be very interesting to find out if these, uh, you know, pseudo scientific beliefs of the New Age movement and alternative science uh, from, you know, these guys were onto this like 20, 30 years ago, this idea of, uh, of this photon belt. So it'll be very interesting to find out next year if they were right and <laughs> all of a sudden we're, we're like bathed in light or something, you know. Um, so anyways, uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, the weather that we're experiencing a little bit and kind of get into that a little bit and kind of um, share with you the, the similarities between the photon belt concept and the interstellar energy cloud that we are scientifically absolutely, you know, proven to be in right now. So uh, that's all I wanted to show you. hope you guys are doing well. Laser Beam Truth signing out.